when the question comes up from time to time, which paint gun do I need? So today, let's talk paint guns. We're just gonna cover a lot of bases and share some knowledge. Some of these guns are probably 20 years old. Most of these guns are either wore out or they became parts guns. Made one gun out of two. This is what I have left. You notice most of my arsenal is SADA. I started using SADA a long time ago. They're great guns, very durable, long lasting. I've definitely got my money's worth out of all of them. In the late 90s, early 2000s, I really got back into painting. I grew up in a paint body family, so that's how I learned the trade. Got out of it for a while, got back into it. When I did, I started buying all these guns. Some of the first ones I bought, Sada Jet 90, top of the line gun in the late 90s. Puts out a great pattern, really lays out some clear. This was my go-to clear gun. The go-to base coat gun in R95. Still one of the best guns I've ever sprayed. So when we talk clear coat gun, base coat gun, What's the difference? Why are there two different guns? Can't you use the same gun for everything? Okay, so I painted my first car when I was 14. And that was with a lot of help from my dad, my uncle, everybody around me telling me what to do, how to do it. But that's when I started. Now back at that time, we used a total different setup than what we're using today. Mainly used a siphon feed gun, which had the pot on the bottom that held the paint. And it took a lot of pressure to put in that gun to draw that paint up and bust it up and apply it to the panel like it need to be applied. Those guns use 50 to 65 PSI to get that fluid out of the gun and transfer it onto the car. Now, out of all the fluid you put in that gun, 30, 40%, somewhere in there, made it to the panel. The rest went into the atmosphere. So your transfer efficiency was pretty low. Today's standards are about the opposite of that. The transfer efficiency now is probably between 60 to 70 percent. So more of what you're mixing up in that cup is actually applied to the car and less goes into the atmosphere. A lot of that is because the products have changed, the equipment has changed, and the laws have changed which demand that that happen. So one thing that greatly helped that transition and getting more transfer efficiency was going from a cup system on the bottom where it had to have a lot of pressure to draw that fluid up to a cup on the top. Now that you have the cup on top, gravity does the work for you and you don't have to apply as much pressure to draw that fluid into the tip and spray it out. Therefore, your transfer efficiency goes up. What's the difference in HVLP, RP, conventional? Conventional is what I just described as far as the old style gun. Conventional used a lot of pressure to make everything happen. Then they came out with HVLP, high volume, a lot of air, low pressure. It helped break up the fluid, kept so much of it from being blasted into the atmosphere and applied more of it to the car. So with HVLP, you have less atomization, meaning you have larger droplets. Some of the benefits of using HVLP for base coat, they weren't as beneficial on the clear coat side. If you try to spray clear coat with a HVLP, those large droplets tend to get you more orange peel and a less desirable finish in the end than you would get with a conventional gun. So in order to try to get some of those HVLP type benefits with the clear coat side of things, SADA developed the RP. This gun did not use the high pressure like the conventional guns. It wasn't as low as the HVLP. It was kind of in between, but you got benefits of each side. Let's take a look now at modern technology. This is my current lineup that I use almost every day. So this is a SADA 4000 HVLP. It's one of my favorite guns. Excellent gun for solvent base coat. Today we're spraying both solvent based and water based materials. So you really need different guns for different applications. Similar gun on the Iwata side. So another comparable gun to this is the Iwata LS400. I started out with SADA, great equipment. I still use them for a lot of things. We looked at the SADA guns I have, Iwata guns. That's not all there is. So here's another gun that's out there now, the DV1 by Davilis. If you've seen these around, you may have seen the silver model, which is the base coat gun, or you may have seen this black model, which is their clear coat gun. Just another great choice. Here in a little bit, we'll take a little more in-depth look at these guns, spray pattern, the way the gun's set up, some of the things I prefer about the guns, some I don't like. So all the guns we've talked about so far are kind of on the more expensive side of things as far as guns and equipment. There's tons of other options out there where you may not have to spend as much and still get great quality results. So after taking a brief look at all these guns, we still have the question, 
What gun do I buy? Let me show you where you need to start. Your P sheet, technical data sheet, product sheet. That's where you need to start. Whether it be base coat, clear coat, primer, sealer, epoxy, spray poly, whatever product it is, you need to look at that data sheet and that's gonna help you with gun selection. Some products require one two to one six, some require one four to one eight, some require a 2.0 or larger. It really depends on what you're spraying. It's nearly impossible to have one gun that does everything. You definitely wanna have a primer gun separate from your base coat and clear guns. Primer is one of the hardest things to get out of a gun when you're cleaning it, eventually it builds up. A poorly cleaned gun can definitely affect the spray pattern. So real quick, I'll just give you a couple examples and then we'll move on to what I like about the guns why well, I don't. JP202 Primer Surfacer. Let's see, look down here, 1.6 to 1.8. Let's say that you have a 1.4. Well, if you spray that product with a 1.4, you're probably not gonna get enough of that product on there per coat. So when you start blocking out that primer, it, you may go through prematurely. It may seem like it's thin and there's nothing there so can you just put an extra coat on? Maybe, maybe not. If you stack too much product too fast, it can cause solvent pop. So you get little craters in your primer. I've seen that happen. So it's best to stay within the parameters of the P-Sheet to get the performance out of the product that you're using. Vibrance VP2050 Direct Metal High Build Primer. Let's see what we got here. Looks like a 1.4 to 1.8. And here we go with Evercoat Slick Sand. Let's see what it recommends. There it is right there. Primer gun with a 2.0 or larger fluid nozzle. That's pretty big. So if you're trying to get the film build of that product in the number of coats that it calls for, that's the tip you need. If you use that 2.0 on the high build epoxy, you may stack way too much on there. So there's also something in the VP2050 tech sheet that says do not exceed eight mils dry film build after sanding. So if you go with too large a tip, say the 2.0, and you pile that primer on there, you may not get the performance characteristics designed into that product. Could fail down the road. So no matter what product you use, it's very important to look at that tech sheet so you'll know what the performance characteristics are of that product and the limitations as well. Let's look at some paint guns. Sada 4000 HVLP, Sada 5000 RP, Sada 5500 RP, Iwata LS 400, Iwata LPH 300, Iwata WS 400 Supernova, VV1 clear coat gun, Black Widow HTE. If you follow the needle straight, this will be your needle adjustment. Same with this one, straight behind the needle, the needle adjustment. Now on the Sada, your fan pattern adjustment is on the side. On the Iwata, it's on the top. Your air pressure adjustment on the Sada, it's right here. On the Iwata, it's on the bottom of the gun. On the Vilvis, straight behind the needle is the needle adjustment knob. This is gonna be your pattern adjustment. The DV1, this knob right here is your air pressure adjustment. Some guns will have a digital readout for the air pressure in the handle here. Some you have to use an external valve. This is a digital gauge, you can't hardly see it. So if you looked at, at where this fluid comes in and how close it is to the nozzle, that makes it easy to clean. When you spray in here, it flushes out fairly easy. When you get something like the Iwata where it's a longer distance to the fluid tip from where the fluid enters the gun, it's a little more difficult to get that clean, that passageway clean in there. Takes a little more effort. The DeVilvis, it's about, it's close to the SADA. Maybe a little bit more distance as far as height. I like the location of the air pressure adjustment right here. It's very easy to get to. The gauge, it's not too bad, it's in the handle. Now something like the DV1, it's right there staring you in the face, that's pretty cool. I do like the way this gun is set up. I do like the air pressure adjustment on this gun on the bottom, kind of out of the way. I like the gauge on top. The DV1 seems to be a well thought out gun as far as the gauge setup, air pressure adjustment, ergonomics. I like it. I want a Supernovas. All the style Iwata guns were more blocky. This is a LPH 300. The W400 was similar to this, real blocky style. Hit your hand a little better on the Supernova. It's a little heavier than the old W400, but it, this gun really atomizes well. It's a great gun. As far as adjusting the air pressure, typically with these guns, I use a regulator because it doesn't have a digital gauge. Set the air pressure wide open. 
and then set my pressure with the regulator. Black Widow, I haven't said a lot about that yet, but let's take a quick look. To me, this gun, that gun is a SATA copy. Very close to the overall design. It's got the fan pattern on the side of the gun, just like the other SATAs. Everything's really set up the same. The nozzle's very similar to the SATA. Now this is the HVLP, so it's gonna be different, but this is not far. If I had a 4000 RP, I'm betting that it would be really close to this cap. They're very similar as it is, but this being the HVLP is probably somewhat different. Not a fan of this type of connection, especially on the gun that I use a gauge on. If I've got this gauge on the gun, I really want it in the same position every time I look at it. I don't wanna to have to figure out where it's at. That's also why I like the built-in gauges. So this is the typical gun wrench that comes with a SADA. Let's take a look at the gun wrench that comes with the Black Widow. Hmm, very interesting. I really can't tell them apart. What about spray pattern? Let's talk about that for a minute. So I could take all these guns into the paint booth and show you their pattern, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Most of these folks that are asking about which paint gun do I need, they probably have never had a paint gun. I'm just gonna give you kind of a visual demonstration of the main differences in the paint guns that I have. And I think you're really gonna like my visual aids. So let's call this pattern the original SADA pattern. It's what SADA had for years. about that? So let's call this the traditional SADA pattern, right? I say traditional SADA pattern because they now offer two different nozzles for the 5500. They offer an O, which is the original, and then an I, which is close to an Iwata, but still a little different. Now what I want you to look at is this fan out here, this rounded part of the fan. Not really paying attention to how wide it is or anything, but this is what I want you to pay attention to. So when you're spraying across the panel, this gun, whether it's tilted here or there, it's gonna get about the same pattern on the panel. So you can be tilted just a little bit. And it's gonna be very similar as you go across the panel. Now, let's look at the Iwata. How about that? This pattern to me is more squared off on the end. So now, with this gun, you have to be a little more precise when you go across a panel, because if you tilt, you're gonna get heavy edges on the bottom or the top. There's gonna to be more paint applied to the top or more paint applied to the bottom if the gun is tilted because of the way the pattern is. So you have to keep the gun more square to the panel that you're painting. Now the solder, when sprayed directly at a panel, Gives more of an elliptical pattern. The Iwata, when sprayed directly at a panel, it's gonna give a slimmer, taller pattern. Now to me, the DV-1 is kinda in between these. It's, it's an elliptical, but it's more rounded on the edges. So to me, the DV-1 has very soft edges on the top and bottom of the pattern, which allow it to blend together as you go across a hood, your overlaps really blend together very well. I like the gun. The Black Widow sprays similar to the SADA. It's a SADA copy. I would say all the way around the pattern has soft edges on this. It's not as defined as the original SADA. I still got good results. I had to really pay attention to what I was doing. Now this is a 1.3. I would like to try a 1.4 in the Black Widow for clear coat or single stage. I'm not sure using this 1.3 quite gives it a fair shake. Like I say, it seems to have a less defined overall pattern than the SADA. So that's an overview of the guns I have. Plenty of other guns out there. Most of the cheaper guns out there are just copies 
of something that's been around for a long time. The biggest difference is gonna be how long they last, the quality of the build. And like I said earlier, a lot of it comes down to personal preference. What builds personal preference is experience. So until you start somewhere, you really don't know where you're going. So you really just gotta jump in, buy a gun, and get going. Now like DeVilvis, the DV-1 comes with several different tips. So if you're not happy with one or the products recommend something else, you have other options available in that kit. 3M offers a gun with disposable tips, different sizes. It gives you a lot of flexibility if you've never had a paint gun, the different size nozzles that you may need, depending on the products you spray. That might be a great option for a beginner paint gun. As you can see, I've sprayed soda forever. So because of all that time I've spent with those guns, they feel right to me in my hand. So if I was to change over to something else like the 3M gun, it may not feel right in my hand. You should also check with a paint distributor in your area to see what guns are allowed in that area. The rules are different in some parts of the country. You just have to determine what your needs are. Check with the P sheet. Typically the HVLP work better with the base coats. Some of those in-between guns, in-between HVLP and conventional, such as the RP, or compliant guns. Compliant usually means that it adheres to the 65% transfer efficiency rule that may do better for clear coat and single stage. So there again, check with your local paint distributor and see what they recommend for the product that you're buying. Hope this gives you a little more to think about before you purchase that gun. Just gotta jump out there, buy a paint gun, pull the trigger. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let's go feed some fish.